When you do project management, you want to have a good overview of where different activities start and where they end. Now, there are a lot of specialized project management tools, but what if you need a Gantt chart inside of your Power BI report? Well, one option is to rely on custom visuals. However, what if you also don't want that? Well, then the other option is to rely on native visuals. In my previous video, I show how you can build a Gantt chart using the native bar chart visual, which you can check out over here. But while doing that, I also realized you can build a Gantt chart using a matrix, like this one over here. And that's what I'm gonna show you in this video. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Buzz, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything I know about Power BI. Now let's see how we can turn a matrix visual into a Gantt chart. Now, of course, we need to first insert a matrix visual. So I go here to the visualizations panel and insert a matrix. Now for this matrix, we want to have project on rows and if you have a category, you can place that as well onto the rows so that we can expand down to the next level. And here for the columns, we need the date. Now the date comes from my custom date table, which is called dim date. So I'm going to take the date field and put it onto columns. Now in the column headers, you see their starting dates for the different projects. Now let's jump to the data model for a second where you see that we have our projects table with all of the project related data and we have a custom date table and it is connected on the fields date and starting date in the project table. And that's why in the column headers, we now have the starting dates. Now what is next is that we need a measure that returns a one if we have a date that's either on or after the starting date and on or before the ending date. So let's create this measure. So let's insert a new measure and let's call this measure conditional formatting for the Gantt chart. All right, so let's do this step by step with variables. So the first variable is going to return the starting date for the different projects. Now, over here, we want to find the minimum date, the minimum start date that we have in our project table. Now we cannot leave it like this because we have dates in the column headers, which then determines the filter context, which we need to remove with a calculate function. So let's put this expression inside of a calculate function. So I want to calculate the start date, so the minimum start date, and I'm going to remove the filters on our date table. Now let's close the calculate function and do the same thing for the ending date. So I'm going to copy these lines and then paste it over here. And the only thing that I need to change is the name of the variable, which is going to be my end date. And over here, I want to have, well, the project ending date. And it doesn't matter if I have here min or max to find the start or ending date because there's only one start or ending date for each project. All right, so now that I have these two variables, we can check the relevant period. So that's going to be my next variable. So here we have the project period. Now for this variable, I want to return true for dates that fall within a project period. Now to do this, we need to take each date and then compare that to the start and ending date. So we can do this by using a min function and we take the date within the filter context. Then we can compare that to the starting date, which needs to be equal to or above the starting date. Now this is not the only condition that needs to be true because we also need to check if the minimum date, so the date within the filter context, is before or equal to the ending date. So this will return true if we have a date inside of the project period and otherwise false. All right, so now we have all of the components that we need to return a one when we have a date inside of the project period. So that is going to be over here, the result variable where we can say, if we have project period true, so over here, you can just say project period, then we want to return a one. Now let's return this result. And now we can use a measure on our matrix visual. So let's drag it onto values. Now here you see it returns a one when we have a date that falls within the project period. Now instead of ones and blanks, of course, we can use conditional formatting, which is going to be the next step. 
So now we go here to format and then we can go to conditional formatting and we want to have a background color. Now, then we can go to advanced controls, open the conditional formatting settings and here we're going to format by rule and we're going to base it on our measure CF Gantt and here we can set up our rules. Now we're going to have two. The first one, there we want to say if it's equal to zero, then we want to have white. And if it's equal to one, then we want to have a bar in blue. All right, and let's click on OK. There you go. Now, of course, there's still the style of the matrix itself, which we can change over here in the style. And we can switch to maybe minimal. Now that already starts to look a little bit better. Now, of course, you still see the ones. Now this we can fix by going back to conditional formatting, and then also apply it to font color. Okay, and now also here, advanced controls. And then we set up exactly the same rules. So CF Gantt, we are going to have two rules. We want to say S equal to zero, S equal to one. Then we want to have white and blue. So exactly the same. Let's click on OK. And now you don't see the values anymore. OK, so you have to decide for yourself if you want to have bars for the category level. Because if we now go up, then you see it applies it to the category level. Okay. However, if I expand down, now I don't apply any conditional formatting to the category level. You can do this. Uh, so then you have to go back again to advanced controls and here just change values only to values and totals. But for this example, I'm not going to do that. As I don't apply it now to the category level, let's turn off the subtotals. So I go here to subtotals, turn it off for rows, turn it off for columns. And now it already looks a little bit cleaner. Now let's then also have a look at the column headers. So here, these are determined by a date field. And it can be that if you have, let's say, a short date, that your Gantt chart becomes very wide. Okay, now one way to fix this is to do the following. Now, first of all, you can go for a formatting string that's a bit shorter. So for example, if you only want to show the months and the days, you can say mm and then dd. I see that already doesn't take so much space anymore. Now, what if you are still not happy? And um, then you can go, well, column by column and make them less wide. However, to do this column by column is going to be very annoying. Now, a quicker way to do that is the following. You go and take your date field and then you go to format and you go for a very short formatting code. For example, YY. And you see now the columns become as wide as two characters. All right, so I like this already much more. Now, the next thing that you do is you go to format and then here you can go to column headers and now you can turn off auto size column width, okay? So when this is turned off, it doesn't automatically change the width of the columns anymore. So that means if I go back to my date field and now change it back to the formatting string that I actually wanted to have, so month, month, day, day, then you can see that the columns don't expand anymore and we have the same width everywhere. All right, so over here, we first always show the month and then the day of the month. You can also add the year or week if you like. Now, the only thing that you need to do is to go over here to fields and then on columns, we also are going to place the year field. So the year field, I place above columns. Now, this means I need to expand down again. So your columns and expand down. All right, what if you also want to have months or weeks? Well, for project management, weeks is very common. So let's go for that option. So you see in my custom date table, I have over here the week number. So in case you don't have this, you need to add it. Now, the way to do that is in your date table. And then over here, you see, I simply added a week number. Okay, so that I have one column with the week number. Now I can use that one also for my matrix. And so if I take now the week number, I can place it below the year. And now again, I need to expand down. And so first you see we have the year, then we have the week. And if I expand down further, we have all of the days. So that starts to look quite okay. Now, the next thing that I wanna do is incorporate the project status by changing colors of the bars that we created using conditional formatting. Now in my data set, you see that for all of the projects, we have a project status, either completed, delayed, or open. Now, let's use this data and incorporate it in our conditional formatting Gantt measure. So let's go to a measure 
And right before our result variable, I'm going to add a new va variable, which is going to be project status. Now here, we basically want to do the same thing as for the start and ending date. So I just copy that over. And the only thing that's going to be different is that I want to return, well, the status now. Okay, so project status. All right, now, how can we use that? Well, let's now go to our result variable. And here we want to say, if we have the relevant period and the project status is completed, then a one. If the project status is open, then a two. If it's delayed, then three. Okay, so because this would require a few ifs, it's probably better to go for a switch statement. So I'm going to replace this with switch. Then the first argument is going to be true, all right? And here we're going to check our different conditions. Now, the first condition that we're going to have is that we want to check, okay, do we have the relevant period? So project period and the project status. So the project status needs to be equal to completed. And if this is true, then we want to return a one. All right, now let's copy this row down. So I can just select the whole row, control I, and then with Alt, Shift, and then the arrow down, we can copy it two more times. And then the only thing that I need to change is over here, the status that we are checking for. So we have delayed and we have over here open. And if it's delayed, we want to have a two. And if it's open, we want to return a three. Then we just need to close our switch statement. And over here, I'm missing a comma. So let's put these commas in. All right. And that's it. Now let's see if this works. So I go back to my visual and then conditional formatting. And let's go to our rule where we now need to expand the rule because we have to check for two more conditions when it's equal to two and when it's equal to three. Now, if it's one, that means it's completed. Let's go for a light blue. Then if it's a two, that means that there is a delay. So I go for orange. And if there's a three, that means it's still open. I go for dark blue. Now let's click on okay. And if I now scroll to the right, you see we have light blue, orange, and dark blue. Perfect. Now we just need to also replicate this for the font color. So advanced controls, and then add two new rules, change it to is equal to two, two or three, and we want to have a number, and then over here, change the colors as you like. All right, now I put it exactly the same. You see that our Gantt chart starts to look better. However, let's now put on the finishing touches. Now, first of all, I see that the column headers are still a little bit white, um, so let's fix this. So I go back over here to format, and then column headers, and let's do the same trick as before. So auto size column width. Then I go here to my date field and let's put in as formatting string YY. And you see it becomes a little bit smaller. And now we are going to turn off auto size width column, go back to the date field. And over here we go for day day or month month day day. And you see now it is below each other. So that's fixed. Now the next thing that I want to change is the tooltip because it's not so pretty. So over here it just returns one. Now to fix that, we need a custom tooltip. So I'm going to insert a new page and let's call this one the Gantt tooltip. Okay, so Gantt tooltip. And then we go to formatting, page information, and I want to turn the tooltip on. Okay, so this tells Power BI, okay, this is going to be a tooltip page. Then we have to determine the size. And here I go for either a standard tooltip or maybe custom. Let's go for custom and I don't want to make it that high. Let's go for a little bit lower, like 100. All right, then we can also go here to page background. Usually I put the transparency to zero, then you get a little bit of shadow. And the page alignment over here, place wherever you like, I'm going to put it over here in the middle. Maybe let's change the page size for the moment back to tooltip, so it's a little bit bigger, and then put it in the visuals that we want to have on the tooltip. Now, I'm going to use a simple text box, and here, I make this text box as wide as the tooltip. And here we can simply type in the text that we want to show. So first of all, I want to show the project name. So the project name, I could just go over here, click on plus value, and then search for project and project name. There it is. And click on save. Now let's see what happens. If I now go back to page one and I select the visual, go to format, 
then over here we have the tooltip. Let's turn it on. And then here on the options, you see we can go for report page and then select that tooltip that we just created. Now, if you hover over the first starting date of that project, it will show the name of the project, project A. And if I go over here to one of the other projects, it's the first, uh, first starting date, project D. However, if I go one to the right, you see it doesn't show anything. So it only works if you hover over the starting date. So this is because there's filter context on the date. Okay, so only when the date that we have here at the top is equal to the starting date, well, only then it finds a project name and otherwise nothing. So to return the project name or any of the other information that you want to place on the tooltip, we need to remove the, uh, the filter that comes from the date. Okay, so we can create a few measures for all of the information that we want to show on our custom tooltip. So let's create a new measure and let's call this one tooltip and let's start with the project name. So project name, and also here we need to calculate. As our expression, we can use the selected value function. So selected value, now returns a value when there's only one. Okay, so selected value, and we want to have the project name. So project table, project column. All right, now, then we want to remove the filters. Uh, so remove the filters on dim date, our date table, and press enter. Okay, so let's go back to our tool tab. And instead of having here project A, I'm going to get rid of it. Again, click on value. And now we want to look for the measure that we just created. Tooltip, project name. All right, let's select it. And let's maybe also make it bold, a little bit bigger, whatever you like, and click on save. All right, now if we go back to our page and then we hover over any of them, and you see now it works. Okay, so it always works. So it doesn't have to be the first starting date of the project. Now it works for also the other ones. Now this exact same method you can use to return the duration, the start date, the ending date, whatever your information you wanna show on your Gantt chart. Now to save a little bit of time, I've already done this, so let's look at the result. So here you go, we have our custom tooltip, and you see I have also included the status, the starting date, the ending date, the duration. I made the tooltip a little bit, less high. Now you see that when I hover over one of the bars, it looks much better. And so here I'm on project A and project B, C, nicely updates. So this is how you can turn a matrix visual into a Gantt chart. Now, if you got some value out of this video, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of my videos. And if you have any questions, just post them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.